The suspect in a Billings murder case linked to the disappearance of his girlfriend is set to make his first court appearance today. 54-year-old Gregory Green was extradited from Nevada and returned to Billings on Sunday. He's booked at the Yellowstone County Jail on a charge of deliberate homicide. This case stems all the way back to September when prosecutors linked Green to the disappearance of his girlfriend, Laura Johnson. Johnson never showed up to work and her body has never been found. Charging documents state Johnson moved to Billings with Green prior to her disappearance. A neighbor also gave police surveillance video that showed Green Green carrying what appeared to be a body covered in a blanket cradle style out of his garage. It also shows him placing a shovel in the bed of his work truck. Detectives found blood in the truck and also retraced its movements. Authorities are searching south of Laurel and east of Billings in the Shepherd, Warden and Huntley areas for a burial site. Green is set to appear in court later this morning. A 16-year-old boy hospitalized after being hit by a van near Pioneer Park. Police responded to the scene just after 7 o'clock Monday night. Authorities tell us the teenager bolted out of an alley between Avenues E and D when the van struck him on 3rd Street West, dragging the victim and then running him over. Sergeant Brett Becker told Q2 the victim appeared to have head injuries as well as broken bones. Police do not believe the van driver was at fault. Witnesses say he was driving the speed limit at the time of the accident, but will submit for blood test, which is standard procedure. A second Republican has entered the 2020 race for Montana's open congressional seat. State Auditor Matt Rosendale will be taking part in his third statewide race in just four years. Rosendale says he's ready to go to Washington and he'll emphasize his record as insurance commissioner, working to expand health care options for Montana and opening up more lands to public access. He lost a close race to Democrat John Tester in Montana's U.S. Senate race last year. During that campaign, Rosendale was often cast by opponents as an outsider because he moved to the state 17 years ago from Maryland. On Saturday, Republican Secretary of State Corey Stapleton was first to jump in and announce he's dropping out of the race for governor and instead running for Gianforte's seat. Two Democrats are already in the 2020 race for the House seat and a third Republican is expected to join the fray later this week. Elsewhere, since China banned imported scrapped materials from the U.S. in 2018, companies all across the United States are struggling to find places to put their recycling, especially cardboard, as mills are running at capacity. Here's Q2 Zoe Zandora with more. With them not buying, it's back up the domestic mills, crash prices. And for some people, it's cheaper to throw it in the landfill than it is to ship it to a recycling facility. Curbside recycling, both residentially and commercially in Billings. Earth First Aid Curbside picks up your recycling, brings it back to the shop, bales the items, then ships them out. Owner of Earth First Aid Curbside Recycling, Scott Barron, says the ban from China made for a long 2018, and it's been an even longer 2019. We currently have no processing facilities in the state of Montana that will process any of this material into a reusable product. Though mills are backed up and prices are down, First Aid is still able to move all of their material with the exception of cardboard, which fell to $0 a ton this month as compared to $5 a ton last month. All of this cardboard just sitting here at Earth First Aid with nowhere to ship. Now mills are cutting back on allocations as they're running at 180% capacity and they are picky and limited on what they can take in, causing backups for some where it's just sitting here like it is at Earth First Aid or it's getting sent straight to the landfill. Historically, Earth First Aid has sold cardboard at an upwards of $120 a ton, then it dropped to 80, then 20. Now it's at zero. Uh, it's just been progressively getting worse uh, to the point where you know we can't sell it. People are sending it to the landfills. China is currently buying cardboard from other countries at $500 a ton. So it's not fun for them, it's not fun for us. What will it take to start moving the cardboard again? Well, more investments in infrastructure. Barron says we need more U.S. mills to process the inventory domestically and bring the manufacturing and jobs back to the U.S. So what they've done is they're sending people from China into the United States. They're purchasing shuttered U.S. paper mills. They're retooling them into cardboard facilities um, to eventually ship the cardboard back to themselves, which is fine, doesn't matter 
as long as they're purchasing and, and moving it, uh, you know, that's what we want to see. We want to see the product move again at, at a, you know, a reasonable price. In Billings, Zoe Zandora, MTN News. Barron says recycling is still a positive that conserves natural resources and creates jobs and supplies at fair price to all when done right. Now we go to Butte where after two years of construction, we're getting a look inside Montana Tech's largest and most expensive building. The Student Success Center is the largest capital project ever undertaken on the Butte campus at 100,000 square feet and a $24 million price tag. It's meant to serve as the new heartbeat of the campus and help attract and keep students at Montana Tech. The first two floors include dorms to hold more than 160 students. The building will also include essential student services, study areas and places to socialize. Students will start moving in mid-August. Construction crews say they're on track to complete reconstruction of Glacier National Park's Sperry Chalet by October. The second phase of the two-year project begins July 1st. That includes masonry work, finishing the roof, and completing the interior. The work is challenging as crews have to hike in and many materials must be delivered by helicopter. The Sperry Chalet kitchen and dining hall will be open this summer for construction crews and the public. Three grizzly bears were recently struck and killed by trains traveling through Glacier County. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks reports on June 6th an adult female grizzly and two yearlings were grazing along the tracks east of Maria's Pass near Glacier Park. The first collision happened around 4 a.m. and involved only the adult female, which weighed about 230 pounds. Then later, another train struck the two 65-pound yearling males near the same location. FWP investigated and determined there were no attractants present that would have drawn the bears to the tracks. The Northern Continental Divide ecosystem is home to more than 1,000 grizzlies. Flathead Lake biologists are sharing their process when it comes to testing and fighting aquatic invasive species. They collect samples in tubes, which are sent to labs across the state. Invasive mussels clog pipes, drains, boats, and ruins the lake's ecosystem. With one sample, we're looking for the environmental DNA of the descended mussels, which you can find basically everywhere, if a species is present. And then the other sample is going for a microscopy analysis. And as you boat in Montana this summer, remember it's mandatory to stop at a boat check prior to setting sail. Always clean, drain, and dry your watercraft. Back here in Billings, bad news for country music fans. The June 28th Brett Elridge show at Cove Creek Pavilion has been canceled. The show's host, Knitting Factory Entertainment, posted on Monday due to an unforeseen scheduling conflict. The Brett Eldridge concert, June 28th at Cove Creek Pavilion, has been canceled. Tickets purchased online will be automatically refunded. All other refunds are available at the point of purchase. Eldridge is scheduled to perform in Greeley, Colorado the next night, 